Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Holotype, Mesozoic North America. And I gotta say, this is a dinosaur game, which for once does not include Jurassic Park implications. Here are your um, different paleontologists and such studying dinosaurs and holotypes, learning about these different specimens coming up, learning about the Demonosaurus and the Ornithonomus and the Dilophosaurus, and you know what? I don't know why I'm even trying to pronounce these. Uh, the T-Rex. Anyhow, the different kinds of dinosaurs here without the, the fear of them coming and eating everyone in a park. Don't get me wrong, I love the Jurassic Park world theme, but this is a worker placement game, a very basic worker placement game about collecting dinosaurs. Let's check it out. In Holotype, you're gonna play with one of multiple boards based on a number of players in the game. So that, like for example, here's a two player board on the other side of the three. There's a four on the other side of this is a five. There's also different field advancement tracks. Anytime someone discovers a hollow type of a dinosaur, you'll move on this track and this track will help determine when the game ends based on the number of players. Each player is gonna have their own board down here. So there's a couple things that you'll have. First of all, you have two workers. You have your, you have this little dude and you have your paleontologist and the field assistant. You also have a grad student who you will be able to unlock at a certain point. Once you have three dinosaurs out, you'll be able to unlock him and have a third worker. You also have a spot to put the different resources that you will get over the course of the game. The resources come in three different colors and you have room for them here. You also will be getting research, which is white, and you can keep an unlimited amount of research. At certain points in the game, based on the field advancement track, everybody is gonna get to pick one of their upgrades. I might want some extra storage, or I might wanna be able to draw from, when I go to the library, get an extra white cube. There's all sorts of benefits, but you're not gonna be able to get all of them, so you have to decide which ones you wanna get. And then you have tokens down here to put on global objectives, and the lowest number that you can see at the or highest number you can see at the end of the game is how many bonus points you'll get. During the course of a game, players are going to be taking turns either putting a worker on an, on a space on the board or by pulling your workers back. So you put or you pull all your workers. When you place a worker, if someone's already there, you can bump them if you're the same height or higher. So your big dude, your paleontologist can bump anybody. A grad student can't bump a paleontologist and anybody can bump the grad, the grad student here. I mean, the, uh, the field assistant. However, you can't bump somebody if there's an open spot on the board. So you can see there's different places to put your workers. What do these places do? Well, um, down here in the university library, this is where you get knowledge. You go here, depending on what kind of worker you place there, you'll get two or three knowledge cubes. When you go here to the specimen lab, you'll be drawing specimens. These specimens are your main way of getting points over the course of the game to be able to play them in front of you where you would go to the publishing journal to go here and your field assistant can't go here, he's too dumb. You'll need to pay a certain number of cubes of a certain color and a certain number of knowledge cubes. At the end of the game, they're gonna give you points and there are also certain types. These types matter because at the top here, you can also go to the publishing journal to claim this if these exist. So if you have four Cretaceous theropod holotypes, you can put one of your discs here. You can also put your disc here if between everybody there are four of these, but if, you, if at least someone else is included in the amount that you have, then you have to pay five white cubes, five knowledge to go there. Field expeditions is how you get cubes. Depending on who you put here, you will either draw a card for field assistants or draw two and keep one of them. When you draw these cards, you are going to take that many dice. So here, for example, you would take three purple dice You'll roll these dice, and this one here lets me re-roll one of them. Here are four green dice and re-roll one, so I pick one. When you re-roll these, that's the number of fossils you find. So one, two, three, four fossils of purple I would get. If you have extra ones, they go here into the museum. If you roll museum, you get one, but it comes from the museum. You can also go to the museum to do trades. A you can trade in fossils for knowledge, or you can trade in one purple for two blue for two for three green. Up to you as long as the required resources are here. When you go on a field expedition, occasionally 
Some of the cards will also give you a trace fossil. You'll draw a trace fossil, and these are cards that you can play for an extra cube when you play a dinosaur to get extra points at the end of the game, although they cannot be played on aquatic creatures. And that's pretty much it for the game. There will be different things that will happen um, as the game goes by. Players will have their own personal objective. Here I want to do carnivore holotypes. The more of these I'll get, I'll get points. But most of your points are going to be coming from playing the various different dinosaurs in the game for points by going up here to these global objectives, your own personal objective. And the game will end when the field achievement hits here and whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, well that is it for Holotype. So I'm gonna start out right away by saying I like Holotype. I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. I enjoy this game. There are a few things. It is a little plain looking. I think this game could have really done with a nice graphic overhaul. It almost feels like, at least with the graphics and stuff, like a very nice, really well prototype. But some of the things like the cubes, maybe they could have been little bones and the art maybe a little better. The biggest problem I have uh, graphically are these global objectives. They're really hard to see. And so what happens is, and this is also kind of a gameplay thing, so we need to get six carnivore holotypes. So I'm sitting there going, okay, you have two, you have one, I have two, that's five. So one more gets it. But you kind of have to ask people, and if you're counting, everyone else knows you're going for that. And sometimes I will put the sixth one out, the next person's like, and then I will put my thing on there. I wish there was a way to be able to do a dinosaur and publish something at the same time. That's my biggest problem with that. But other than that, everything works really well. I like the field expeditions of rolling dice and deciding, do I want to take two green dice but take a, a trace re a fossil? Or do I want purple, which is a rarer resource? Do I want to go down to the Universal Library? What's really interesting are those upgrade tiles. That's a really fun thing I find. Everyone gets them at certain points in the game. And so immediately, what do I want? Do I want extra spots to store stuff? Do I want to, when, when I go to the Universal Library, do I want the extra white cube? I personally think that's the best upgrade. Do I want to be able to search through the discard pile? Because you can always take the top card from the discard pile when you're taking more dinosaur cards. But, um, Maybe I want to be able to search your discard pile and take any dinosaur. That's kind of cool. Um, and so I like the upgrades. I wish there was like four or five more of each type. And I, from what I understand, there's an expansion out that has some more upgrades in it. The dice are really good quality and it's fun to roll them. So there's a little bit of luck there. But it plays very smoothly. It's not going to break any, you know, there's like nothing majorly new here. This is... Go around, get resources, turn those resources in for other things, for goals, which in this case are dinosaurs. But the dinosaur thing is cool. And it seems to be, you know, have like a scientific bent to it, which I like a lot. So overall, I, I enjoy this one. Um, it is a pleasant game, and I'm a big fan of put a worker out or pull them back. But the bumping thing is really fun. I have to sit there and go, oh, well, I'm going to have to bump somebody and go into this spot. So... Let's see, you're about to pull your workers back. I'm going to bump one of your workers because you weren't pulling them back anyway or spread it out or what have you. So a neat little game. And, and, and I say little, but it's more medium weight style game. But this isn't one that's going to be hard to teach or hard to play. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. So uh, that is Holotype. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.